Hi und herzlich willkommen. Ähm, ihr seid hier in einem Vortrag zu einer Open Source Software Planopticum, ähm, die von Christopher in seiner ähm, Oh Gott, jetzt habe ich schon wieder vergessen. Äh, Dissertation. <lacht> Danke, Dissertation, Dissertation ähm, entwickelt wurde oder mit, ähm, ähm, wo er sich mit beschäftigt hat. Und ähm, er wird uns jetzt ein bisschen was davon erzählen. Und das Schöne daran ist, dass er das explizit auf ähm, Anfänger ausgerichtet hat. Das heißt, äh, auch Menschen, die noch nie was davon gehört haben, so wie ich, können äh, hier noch Schönes lernen. Dann viel Erfolg und schönen Applaus für dich. Thank you and hello everyone. Um, I would like, my name is Christopher by the way, and I uh, want to introduce you to the field of planoptic cameras. And I brought one device with me that is a planoptic camera. And as you can see, um, this doesn't look any different from a conventional camera. However, there are micro lenses just in front of the image sensor, which conventional cameras do not have. And With this, something really fancy is possible, and this is called refocusing. And I want to give you an idea what refocusing means. So, as you can see in this image, we have many, many focal planes that we can bring into focus. So each object can be brought into focus from only a single capture. So you only have to take one shot and then sweep through the scenery uh, with Yeah, regards to the focus. And when I started looking at this and when I heard of it, I was wondering how is this possible? And I want to give you an idea today how um, we can achieve this. So as I mentioned earlier, we only need one image. And this is what such an image looks like. We have thousands of micro lens or thousands of micro images that are projected by micro lenses. And as you can see in the magnified portion in the middle, uh, These are very small, so uh, this can be thought of as a fly perceives its environment. And we need to do uh, some image processing in order to achieve this refoc refocusing capability. Um, but before that, uh, we first need to dive into the optics to understand how this is possible. But don't worry, I don't get uh, into too much details here. Um, by the way, does anyone recognize this image, which is blurred here? Yeah, you got it. Even though it's blurred, you've... <laughs> that's, that's a really good guess. So, I guess the average... How many of you do, uh, do know Doom, by the way? So, yeah, that tells a lot about the average age of this uh, in this room, then, <laughs> I, I believe. Uh, I'd leave it to you to decide what that age m might be. But, um, so, uh, to start off, we have an optical bench here, which is that red dashed line. And on this optical bench, we have a conventional image sensor that you can find in any camera out there. And in front of that, we have these so-called uh, micro lenses. And this is the unconventional part. By the way, I just depicted six of them here, but actually you have thousands of them. And also simplified is the objective lens that you also can find with or in any camera. And with this, the optical setup is complete and we can start looking at rays. And I've depicted one yellow ray here because this is quite a distinctive ray. Um, it's called chief ray. And a chief ray has the property that it is traveling through the optical center of a lens. And this chief ray travels through two optical centers, one, through the optical center of a micro lens, and then again through the optical center of the main lens. And if we extend that ray, if we connect these two positions and extend that ray, we end up on the image sensor where this intensity gets captured. And this, by the way, is um, the center of the micro image. And if we continue to trace these rays, we can see that we end up having a beam um, of consisting of all these rays. Um, but we are not only have one pixel, or we can think of it, one ray corresponds to one pixel now, but we not only have one pixel per microimage, we have plenty of them. I simplified this, 
by just saying we have one or several pixels uh, on the left side, uh, which are highlighted in blue here, that also form one beam, and on the other side as well. So with this, we have three pixels per micro image. And in doing it that way, we have fully described the uh, plan optic model here and can uh, start to look at refocusing. So how is it possible to refocus? And to remind you what refocusing means, I brought that Doom guy into focus here. And so let's start off with this developed model. Um, first, we have to make a few definitions here. As you can see in, uh, with the red bar, with the red line here, um, we have an object plane, and this is represented in the right image with the black and white test chart. And this black and white test chart is brought to focus here in that case. If we pick one object point of this particular plane and trace the rays through the image site, we see that they focus on the image plane here in this micro lens. But they do not end up there, they travel through the lens and end up on the image sensor in the micro image. So what we have to do now is we need to reconstruct the intensity that existed here at this image plane position. How do we do that? We simply integrate, or in other words, sum up the pixel values that belong to this micro image. So we take all the pixels within that micro image and add them up. In doing so, we reconstruct the intensity that existed on that micro lens. But we now only have one spatial point of that refocused image, and we, knew, we need to do that for all the adjacent points as well. And in doing so, we reconstruct the entire image with a focus at the background. But as I claimed earlier, you can also focus to foreground objects. As you can see, these are these figures here. So now I move the object plane to the front, and again, I pick an object point. And I trace the rays on the image side, and I see that each ray is traveling through a different micro lens now. So the pixels that I have to collect and add up are distributed over many micro images. And I have to identify them and then add them up to reconstruct an image that is refocused to the foreground. I again do that for all the adjacent positions. And finally, we have reconstructed an image with a focus to the foreground. So this is basically how refocusing works. And um, yeah, when I developed that model and explained this to myself and implemented it, I was wondering, is it possible to predict the distance to a refocused object? And it turned out that this is feasible. Um, again, we have that model. And in order to achieve this, I regard each ray as a linear function and fit these linear functions into an equation system and solve this equation system in order to get the intersecting position. And once I have that, I can estimate the distance in, in, a, in a metric value uh, to, with respect to this object. Um, obviously, what you need to do in, uh, in advance is know the focal length parameter of your main lens, know the focal length parameter of your micro lens, know the pixel pitch of your image sensor. But if this is all known, then you can estimate the distance. Uh, of a refocus object. Another capability of this camera is to change the perspective view. And I want to give you an idea what that means. Uh, again, we have our model here. And if I highlight pixels that share the same relative position in each microimage and collect them and rearrange them, I, I have generated a view from a different perspective. And the perspective position is where these blue rays focus. So the perspective position resides on that main lens aperture plane. And you can move along that. And as you can see, when I move back and forth, like now the yellow rays are highlighted, if I move back and forth, the objects in the front appear to move, which is a typical stereoscopic setup, as you can also imitate while closing and opening your eyes, you see the same phenomenon. And I can also pick another position. So you can. You, you can vary this viewpoint along your main lens aperture plane. Algorithmically, this can be thought of 
uh, as illustrated here. On the left, we have the microimage representation with microimages of three by three pixel size. And I highlighted the blue pixels here because they correspond to these blue rays. And if you rearrange them uh, to, to a new image array as depicted on the right, you would obtain this perspective image view. So this is how it works in principle uh, on a very abstract level. If you want to dive into this and get a more in-depth knowledge, I recommend to read some of these scientific publications. And now and finally, I would like to come to the most important part of this talk, which is um, the software that I've written that um, yeah, has the implementation of the algorithms I just described. Uh, you can find that on GitHub as uh, with this link down here. Um, this is how the user interface looks like. I will give a brief uh, demonstration now. Um, and if you do not call a uh, Planoptic camera your own, you can also obtain some light field data online. This is free to use and you can use, download the software, download the uh, image data and play around with it. And why am I telling you all this? Well, I would like you to join me on my road developing this and uh, collaborate uh, to improve this software. So, um, to give you an idea, this is purely written in Python, by the way. Um, we can also, since it takes some time to compute these images, one step could be to uh, uh, convert parts of it to C. Uh, to make it to make it perform uh, faster and better. Um, this is what the interface looks like. It's quite lean, not too many buttons. Um, and I want to uh, use some of the images uh, we captured back then at university, um, which is this image. It's, here you can see the micro images again. This is what the raw image looked like. This is a camera, by the way, that we built ourselves back then uh, because the hydro cameras were not available. Um, and also we needed to know uh, the focal length and so on, and this was not given with a commercial camera. This is why we had to take our own components to know what we are using, to know the parameters in order to predict distances and so on. So now I um, have pointed to the, to the light field image, and what is also necessary is this white image calibration file that I just opened. This is necessary, necessary to calibrate uh, the camera. We need to find the centers of each microimage, and this is why this has to be provided as well. There are some settings here. I don't want to go to details here. Um, there's a documentation. I took some effort to document that, uh, so if you're interested, you can read through. So now, while this is processing, um, I think there's a lot of, or some time to, for you to ask me questions if you have some. Um, so if you like, um, you can come up with what's, whatever is on your mind. Um, how difficult is it to retrofit a, uh, like a normal DSLR with a, a micro uh, lens array? Or is it even possible uh, co or commercially available? available? Um, if I got you, if I got you uh, right, then you're asking whether uh, the manufacturing uh, or how difficult it is to manufacture such a camera. Um, well, there are available micro lens arrays for about $1,000 roughly. Uh, if you just get one or two, and I think you don't want to get more than that, um, then it is quite expensive. And the manufacturing process, well, depends on your skills. But uh, yeah, it is not too difficult. Uh, I've seen a workshop of a colleague who uh, actually did that in front of an audience and built that with a conventional, I guess, whatever camera that was. But a quite conventional camera, micro lens was attached and then you attach your objective lens, and then you're done. And the rest is done by the software. And the good part of this software is it is not limited to commercial available cameras or the one that was initially commercially available. Um, so you can build your own and use that software 
because it is not restricted to uh, any type of or a specific type uh, of panoptic camera. Yeah, was did that answer your question satisfyingly? Um, so if we st if we think one step ahead, could this um, technology be applied to video images as well? Very yeah, very interesting question. We asked ourselves the same thing uh, back then, and it would be very convenient because usually at the uh, movie uh, setup you have a one camera, and what what one person does, this person is called the focus puller. Uh, he pulls the focus of the scene next, standing next to the cameraman and you could done, do that just in one shot. Like usually this person has to do uh, it one or once or twice and this could be done only in one shot and you can postpone that process to the post-processing stage. So this could be done later on. It depends on the uh, yeah, creative freedom of the people uh, sitting behind there. And there was a company um, also looking into that and trying to introduce a camera to the cinematography market, but they didn't make it before they had to close down. And, but yeah, this, it is a very interesting application. And if it comes to other applications, I think that microscopy could benefit from, from this because uh, these viewpoints that I've shown you earlier are very close to each other, very narrow meaning you only get depth from very close objects. So you have to be, your objects that you capture have to be very small, meaning microscopy might be uh, one field or endoscopy or all the medical uh, instruments out there. Yeah. Um. If we're talking about microscopes, the usual problem there is to have enough light. And in this case, I think, but that's basically my question, um, that you also reduce the amount of light that's available if you restrict yourself to certain points of the camera because you only need those for that particular focus and you discard the rest. So you would need much more light, I guess. Uh, what do you say? Um, in fact, you, the, the amount of light that, you, that is captured is the same. However, there's another trade-off. Um, since we uh, collect only one pixel out of each microimage, we reduce, uh, reduce the overall uh, image sensor resolution. So the trade-off is rather on the resolution side than on the uh, amount of light side, I would say. And so this is rather the trade-off that we are making with this type of camera. But in terms of light, these images can be quite no noisy since you, um, uh, you split up your image point to many pixels. Like the image point that existed on the micro lens gets spread over many pixels. So um, by this you, have, you introduce noise or you have quite noisy images. But since you have the information replicated, you can also, by this integration process, you can uh, cancel out parts of the noise quite easily. So um, I would rather think that the uh, image resolution part is much harder for, for or much, yeah, uh, hard to take um, trade off for photographers or for uh, any medical applications. Yeah. Um, I have a Python question. Yeah. I'm seeing it's taking quite a while. Uh, what technology stack do you use? Do you use Siphon? Do you use NumPy? Do you use PyPy? Yeah. Um, let me just give you... Um, I've written the dependencies here. I don't use uh, CPython right now. If there's anyone who's an expert in that, who has used that before, you, Cython, okay. Um, sorry, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not using it uh, up to now, uh, but if you're willing to take part and uh, introduce that, feel free. Um, currently, I'm using uh, just a few. I try to keep it very, uh, yeah, 
to, to keep it very sm um, uh, lean, I only use, how many of them are? Five, five libraries here. NumPy is one of them, SciPy, uh, TIFF library, and some demo syncing libraries uh, in order to uh, yeah, use the buyer pattern image of, of the Lytro camera. And the heavy lifting is in NumPy? Yeah, obviously, uh, yes, okay. yes. This is where the image processing takes place, yeah. All right, then, if there are no more questions. Anyone want? You have uh, one more question? Or do, are you done with the demo? Or? So, sorry, say it again. Are you, are you done with the demonstration? You You'd, so the yeah. Image. Oh yeah, true, true, <laughs> true. Uh, completely forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, since I already have shown you some of the images, I thought that come. That, that's not the big magic now. Okay, uh, let's have a look at them. So, um, the refocusing process is done. However, I guess yeah, all the images are there. I was thinking maybe they're still exporting. So. Now, these are the images as they come out. And as you can see, this is a slightly different image from that that we saw in the introduction. And as you can see, refocusing is possible. And what's also coming out of the software uh, is, are a bunch of viewpoint images. And as mentioned earlier, they are a bit smaller since uh, I've done some tweak to extend the spatial resolution of the uh, refocused images. And as you can see, uh, the objects in the front are moving. However, if we move at the very end of the aperture uh, plane of, of, that micro, uh, of that main lens, we see that um, vignetting effect. This is a typical uh, vignetting behavior that you also um, face with conventional cameras. So this has to be treated in future. And if you are an expert in image processing, you're free to uh, join me and rectify uh, this and eliminate this artifact. Okay, so thank right. you very much. Okay, um, thank you. Ah, oh, okay, hey, there's one There's question. another one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as you just showed us, uh, this technique allows you to uh, compute view, uh, different viewpoints w from one shot. So that should allow you to compute 3D models of the scene you That's shot. absolutely true. Uh, you can compute depth maps, so-called depth maps. Um, yep, um, this is also one of the future tasks that are still on my list. If you have experience in doing that, you're happy. Uh, I'm happy to have you on my side, and um, yeah, that would be great to put that also into that software, um, for sure. Okay. So. Okay, so thank you very much for your um, interesting talk, and uh, I think you will be still happy for, for others to talk to you afterwards as well, so thank sure. you. Sure, feel free, yeah. Yeah, thank you for having me, and as said, uh, come to me afterwards, and let's have a chat, and yeah, have a good day.